It's time for a Radical Encounter with the Word of God with Pastor Jerry O'Brien and Pastor Gayus Furlu. Each week they will tag team your faith to leave you stronger, wiser, and more solid in your walk with Christ. Now is not the time for lukewarm preaching. Now is the time for a Radical Encounter. Welcome to our program today, A Radical Encounter. The Lord is looking for that for each one of us. We got a program today that's going to take you there. So let's go into a song, and then after the song, we're going to get right into the message. Thank you for tuning in. Yeah! Now listen to me. I can see the enemy. He's coming now with force. But that don't really worry me. Satan, I bind you in the name of God. You cannot come against me because I'm washed in the blood. Hallelujah. The battle has been won. Hallelujah. The battle has been won. With his mighty surge, and he may have his demons, but we still have the word. So, saints, are you with me? Can you hear me shout? Let's stand in the name of Jesus and cast those demons out. Hallelujah! The battle has been won. Hallelujah! Battle has been won. Yeah! Now listen to the saints when the battle seems so long. Well, don't lose your courage because God's still on his throne. Just stand firm in the battle and don't turn tail and run. Just fix your eyes toward heaven from which your strength will come. Hallelujah. The battle has been won. Hallelujah. The battle has been won. Hallelujah, the battle has been won, hallelujah, the battle has been won, the battle has been won. Welcome again to our program today. Got an awesome message here today that is, it is for sure going to bring you into a, a radical encounter with Jesus Christ. I want to start off with our scriptures here for today. We're getting our scriptures from Matthew chapter 17, verse 14, all the way down to verse 21. Now, in this story, we see uh, Jesus basically had took his disciples up on the Mount of uh, Transfiguration, and uh, Peter, James, and John, they basically saw uh, Moses and Elijah, and they saw them talking with Jesus. So they had an encounter upon the mountain. And the interesting thing is that when you look at this story, you would think that as they come off the mountain, anybody that had had that kind of experience would literally ha be walking in a spiritual mindset. But uh, we can learn a lot of lessons from this story here because of 
their, their focus, basically. And uh, Jesus uh, came down the mountain, and there was a boy who was uh, literally tormented with spirits. His daddy came up to Jesus, and that's where we're going to take the story off. Uh, we're going to start off with the story right there. But there's three things I want to point out in here in this whole story. There's three keys for us to get over our mountains, to basically walk in deliverance. Uh, we're going to need to use humility, faith, and sacrifice. So write those three things down because those three things are going to be the key to you walking in deliverance, you moving your mountain out of your way. So let's look at the scriptures. In verse 14 it says, And when they had came to the multitudes, uh, there had come a certain man who knelt down to uh, before Jesus, saying, Lord, have mercy on my son, for he is a lunatic and very severely vexed. For often he falls into the fire and often into the waters. And I brought him to your disciples, and your disciples could not cure him. Jesus answered him and said, O ye of little faith, perverse generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I suffer with you? Uh, bring him to me. Verse 18, Jesus rebuked the devil, and the devil departed from him, and the child was cured from that very moment. And uh, verse 19 says, Then came the disciples to Jesus uh, uh, separately and asked him, Why couldn't we cast out this devil? And Jesus said unto him, Because of your unbelief. Verily I say unto you, If you have the faith of a grain of a mustard seed, you can say to this mountain, be thou removed, and be cast into the sea, and it shall be removed. Nothing shall be impossible to you. How be it, though, this kind of faith, this kind of uh, demon does not come out but by prayer and fasting. There are three keys, humility, faith, and sacrifice that we see in these scriptures. When we look at that very first scripture, the very first scripture there, it says, and when they came down from the mountain, there was a certain man that came, threw himself down at Jesus and asked him. That was a symbol of his humility. He basically came and, and threw himself down and said, Lord, I submit myself to you. Spiritually speaking, he was surrendering and submitting to Jesus' authority. He had already tried the disciples and the disciples wasn't able to help him. So he uh, knew that this uh, uh, group uh, that was being led by Jesus Christ was uh, literally uh, uh, signs and wonders followed this group. So he went right to the head, and that's really what you and I got to do. We got to go right to Jesus. We got to operate off of his power, not the power basically of, of a person, but we operate off of him. It's faith in Jesus. So when we look at that, that's the first key. That first verse holds the first key. Then we go to verse 15, and it says, uh, Lord, have mercy on my son, for he is a lunatic, and he's been severely vexed with this. Often he throws himself in the fire, often into the waters. That indicates that this boy, uh, for a long time, has been tormented with this. This mountain, people, was something that this young boy did not put in front of himself. Now, over the years, those of us who have served the Lord and those of us who have lived, you know, a long life, you know, before we knew the Lord, we build a lot of our mountains. We build a lot of the things that, that are, 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 we're struggling with. But this young boy did not build this. So this tells us that it came from a generational curse. It came either from his father, what his father uh, uh, was into, or, or his uh, father's father. Uh, this mountain, this obstacle, I look at my life a lot of times. I didn't grow up into a, a family that served God. I grew up in a family that basically uh, 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 lived life for themselves. Uh, many of my family were, were drunks. They drank. They, they were partiers. And that set up some obstacles for me. Right off the bat, I struggled because I had mountains that were placed before me, circumstances that I had to face in life uh, that I had no control over. But nonetheless, I still had to overcome these. I still had to go up that mountain. I had still had to be delivered from these things. I still had to get them out of my way. So when we do, when we understand that, uh, that key is going to be uh, crucial to us. And as, as the story goes on, 
we see here that uh, we've got to uh, make sure that we're not confused about what the mountain is and how uh, to address the mountain. Number one, most of the time when we see struggles in our life, we look at the physical things. We look at the physical mountains. Listen, the physical sign of your mountain, whether it be, you know, finances, whether it be an addiction, whether it be, you know, uh, a, a trouble in your marriage, that's just the fruit of an invisible thing. That is the phys physical, visible fruit. There is an invisible root. That mountain's core goes below the ground. The, the bedrock, solid bedrock of that mountain goes below the ground. The mountain also tells us it's not something that's been built overnight. It's something that's been built over time. So in our own efforts, there's no way that we would have enough time in life to tear those down ourselves. This man had to go to Jesus. It is through the shed blood of Jesus Christ that we are going to walk in deliverance in our life. It's going to be through the shed blood of Jesus Christ and the faith that we put in Christ and what happened on the cross of Calvary that is going to cause our mountains to get out of the front of us. And I want to tell you right now, you can say to your mountain, move out of my way. Unfortunately, what happens in our lives is we begin to try to move this mountain with our own efforts. And we can make some kind of headway with that. We can get halfway up or maybe a third of the way up uh, uh, at the bottom of the mountain. Then we get frustrated. Then we get tired. Then we get weary. And what we begin to do is camp at that level. Whatever ledge that you're on, you begin to camp at that level. And then you begin to get comfortable with being there. And you're saying to yourself, you know what? I may not be over it, but I'm up higher, and I'm just going to camp here. And then after time goes on, you can't even recognize that you're still stuck at the foothills of the mountain. What you've got to keep in uh, your focus the plan that God has for your life. Don't get stuck on the mountain. Don't get stuck in the middle of it. Don't get stuck uh, uh, before God, uh, uh, that, that power, that resurrection moves that mountain. You don't settle for second best. Don't settle for 90% of the way there. Don't percent, uh, uh, settle for 95% efficiency. God says that we can be overcomers. An overcomer is someone who has 100% overcome that mountain that's in front of you. And when we look at the uh, demonstration of this, you know, you can look at, you know, trying to do this with your own might. You can try to do this with your own strength. And like I said, you can make some headway. It's like pulling a dandelion out of the ground. Once you pull it out and you take the leaves and throw it away, it looks good. But a couple of days later, all of a sudden it's there again. So you haven't gotten to the root. That's the indication that you haven't gotten to the root of the issue. Now, when we go on and we look at verse 16, verse 16 says, uh, and he brought the man uh, uh, basically uh, to the disciples and the disciples couldn't help him. Well, we want to know why the disciples couldn't help him. We got to go to uh, Mark chapter 9. And actually, this, this story is recorded in two other places. It's recorded in Luke chapter 9 and it's recorded in Mark chapter 9. That's why you can't just read the Bible. You've got to read the Bible. In Mark chapter 9, in uh, verse 22, 23, and 24, it tells us, it literally shows us the second key to how we walk in victory in, in, in overcoming these and walk in victory. In other words, getting that mountain out of your way. Jesus asked him in verse 22 of Mark chapter 9, he says, do you believe that I can do this? Now, you would think if that man came to Jesus, you know, you would think that the man already de demonstrated some level of faith, which he did, but Jesus wanted him to speak it out of his mouth. Sometimes you've got to speak things out of your mouth. You know, uh, you, you, you have enough, basically, to get you to say something, and that's good, because you've got to say something. Jesus said, do you believe that I can do this? And in verse 23, he, you know, he basically says, yes, yes, I believe you can do this. In, in uh, verse uh, 23 and 24, he says, help my unbelief, indicating the man recognized that he didn't have a whole lot. I want to tell you something. You don't need a whole lot. Just as I've read in those scriptures, Jesus began to uh, uh, minister to the disciples. He began to teach them. Now, this man had already left 
His son was already healed and they had already left the scene. Jesus began to talk to his disciples and began to tell them, listen, you see, all you got to do is have, the, all the person's got to do and all you've got to do is have the faith of the size of a mustard seed. It don't take a whole lot to move your mountain, but it's going to take something. You see, it tells us in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6, it says that without faith, it's impossible to please God. Now, the good news is that we are told in Romans that we're all given, uh, or, or in Romans chapter 12, verse 3, it's told, we're told, we're all given a measure of faith. Every one of us have the ability as from the, from the uh, speck of a mustard seed, uh, just using that faith that God's given us. So this is not something you can't do. This is not something beyond your ability. God has already given you enough faith to be like this uh, man. But remember, it's humility. Humble yourself before God. Recognize you need his help. Recognize uh, uh, your inadequacies. Recognize those. But then stand on the promise that Jesus is going to when you release your faith, and you pull your trigger, just like that man, when he pulled his trigger and Jesus asked him, he said, yes, I believe. But Lord, I've got some areas in my life that, that, that I'm struggling in believing. So help me in those areas. Then Jesus began to move immediately and spoke to that demon, get out. And you know what? That demon had to leave. That mountain had to be moved. That man, it says, from that very day, that man's son, was delivered. Now, I, I don't have time to preach it, but I can tell you that this was a generational curse that, that haunted this and tormented this young boy. Because you see, the work was done in his daddy's life. It wasn't done in his uh, boy's life. Oh yeah, you saw the evidence in the boy's life because the boy stopped convulsing. He stopped, you know, being tormented. But you see, the work of faith had to be done in his daddy's life. So that is a key, people. That is a key for us to know that if we, you say, well, I'm going to the porn sites. Nobody knows I'm going there. Uh, yes, but listen, you may be going to the porn sites by yourself, but you're taking your children with you. You're taking the next generation with you. You are bringing something and, and putting something in their life, exposing them to some things. This story of this man exposed his son to some things and, and did not have the proper covering over his life that he should have and caused this young boy to be exposed some, to some things. So God was dealing with the, the, the father's heart here. So as the father got himself right, then he was able to cast the demon out of the boy. Now there does come a time where the, the, the boy will come into a point of accountability. Then the burden is upon his shoulders to walk in that deliverance. But until then, that man had to get his self right. He had to... Uh, 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 believe God and begin to walk in order to help his family walk in there. And that's really a good message we could use to preach to the men, uh, uh, how important it is to have covering over our family. But I don't have time to preach that message. But let's look back here. This is really, these three keys is really what uh, uh, caused this radical encounter to become something special that God would record for an eternity for all of us to see. 2,000 years later, we're reading this story because of this radical encounter that they had. But it took faith. We are living in season where we're going to have to walk in faith. This man had to walk in faith to receive that. And when this man released this, the Lord basically took over, said, step back. I know you can't do this yourself. And the man's mountain was removed. Then we see here, down here, as Jesus began to deal with the disciples, he showed us the third part of this key, that it's going to take sacrifice. Now, this man's son was delivered because he surrendered to Jesus. But this man was going to have to be required to walk in deliverance. And in order for these, dis these disciples to be able to do what Jesus did, there had to be a sacrifice. Listen, you don't walk in the glory and the anointing of God without sacrificing. You may, you know, those people who are just uh, going to, uh, 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 just going uh, to college and getting a degree and then basically going and not studying the Word of God from that point on and really, you know, you're not going to walk in that anointing. You've got to get in and you've got to learn. Jesus said here, here's, here's the, uh, the verse that really lays out the final key, the, uh, the third key to walking in complete deliverance, walking in uh, uh, 
free of having that mountain in your life. Now understand something. There's going to be many mountains in your life. And as that mountain is removed, you're going to get over that mountain and you're going to receive that reward that's on the other side of that mountain. There's going to be another mountain you're going to come to in your life. But the process is the same. As we go, the scripture says, we're going from glory unto glory. And he's called us, he's, uh, I like what Paul said. He said, uh, thanks be to God who always causes us to triumph in victory through Christ Jesus. This uh, 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 chapter here in this story here shows us that when we get that uh, uh, encounter with God through faith, that it's going to take some sacrifice. Jesus told his disciples in verse 20 down here, he said, the reason you wasn't able to do this is because of uh, the lack of faith. You know, you don't have enough faith here is what he's told him. He said, because I'm going to tell you the truth here. He said, for with, uh, with the uh, grain of faith of a mustard seed, if you just had that, you could do this. He said, but listen, this kind of demonic spirit, this kind uh, of thing is not removed just by uh, walking with me. You basically, it says by prayer and fasting, this kind of mountain will be removed. Prayer and fasting indicates a sacrifice. Now, if you study the Word of God and you go through the Word of God, you're going to find out that there are a lot more things that go along with it, a lot more sacrifice. You're going to die to the flesh. But you can't die to the flesh until you develop a, a relationship, a talking, a communicating relationship with Jesus Christ. Prayer. Not just going to God when you, woe is me uh, moment. But you're going to God every day and developing a relationship and saying, Lord, I just, today I just want to tell you I love you. And today I just want to uh, you know, let you know that I'm, I, I appreciate what you do for me. You know, I'm developing that relationship on a daily basis. True worship is living a life of worship day to day. So we see here in this story, and then fasting, from the fasting standpoint, uh, fasting is bringing our body, our fleshly desires, into uh, agreement with our spirit, the, the righteousness of our spirit. And our spirit keeps us in uh, uh, plumb with God's spirit. And as we begin to fast, the body learns who's, who's boss. The body learns who's in control. You see, we're trying to control the exterior of uh, our problems when it really, the control needs to be handled on the interior of us. And the only way to do that is to flip the table back upright. You see, because we're trying to deal with the mountains from the outside, we've got to deal with the mountains from the inside. So to do that, you've got to get your spirit leading you instead of your flesh leading you. This whole story lays out uh, uh, how to do that. When we understand uh, that it is a fight in the flesh, uh, then we've lost it. It is a spiritual battle. This was a spiritual mountain. And you got to get to the point to where you recognize, you know what, I've tried, and, and here's one thing, you know you've got a mountain when you've done everything you know to do in the flesh and it hasn't gone away. When you've gone to AA and the 12 steps, and when you've gone and that stronghold still has you. And even when you go to those people who are supposed to be anointed and walking in the, the Spirit of God, and they've done everything that they can do and you still stuck there. You know you got a mountain, meaning that you've got to have Jesus. I've had people say to me, well, you know, your anointing wasn't strong enough to help me out of what it was. Listen, the mountain don't belong to me. It belongs to you. My job is to give you the word, and then you've got to use these three keys. You've got to come before God in humility. Then you've got to, to uh, release your faith, whatever level of faith you have. It's just, this message is so awesome because it gives us hope. We know uh, uh, that if we just use what we've got, if we use that little bit of measure of faith that we've got, the Bible says Jesus will step in. But you've got a part to play, and the part that you've got to play is you've got to put the flesh uh, down in your life. You've got to bring things under the lordship of Jesus Christ. You've got to submit the desires of the flesh 
and that's going to take suffering. It says a lot of people want to quote that Philippians 4 uh, verse 10, you know, I want to experience the power of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Well, to do that, people, you've got to go to point B of that verse. And that is to become a partner in the sufferings of Jesus Christ. And the sufferings that we're talking about are dying to the flesh, are reading the Word of God, getting it in you, getting rooted and grounded in it. And then you'll begin to notice that you begin, you begin to uh, uh, build precept upon precept. And then you get, finally get over the mountains and then you keep moving throughout your life. And these three keys is the key to you continuing to go forward with God. And that's the whole purpose. God wants you not just get to the point to where you've grown up in the Lord, like it says in Ephesians. It, he wants you to come to the full stature of Jesus Christ, chapter 3 of Ephesians says, so that we not only can live in victory, but that we're not tossed about by every wind and doctrine, but that we can also be used by God as an instrument to help other people walk in these three keys to victory in their lives. That's true deliverance. Jesus was telling his disciples, you're not going to get this, people, just by reading a few scriptures. So remember that. Remember that we have a part to play. And if we begin to apply these scriptures in our life, like I said, uh, there's a ton of, of, of uh, a preaching that we can do on this uh, example here. But we see that there was a radical change, but it could not take place until there was a radical encounter in these people's lives. And what brought that about was this man humble himself before God and this uh, 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 humility brought him into a position where he can use his faith. And then proceeding with that was sacrifice in our lives, choosing to have a life exchange. This is, God's not looking for change in your life. He's looking for exchange. You exchange your life for Jesus and give him your life and you take his life and I'll guarantee you, you can walk in this. this. If it happened for me, it'll happen for you. If it happened to them, it can happen to you. Well, listen, my time is over. It's up for today. But I want to encourage you to connect with us. And you can do that by going to our website right there, faithharvestfellowship.org. Take a tour around that website. But I also want to ask you to consider being a sponsor. We need uh, your support, your love gifts to help us keep this program going. And for everyone that is able to send us a $25 uh, a love gift or more, we will send you one of my CDs. One of the CDs of the songs that I've written. And I know it will bless you. And in doing so, you'll bless us and help us to continue to bless other people. And when we do that, then the kingdom of God begins to grow. We begin to add people into the kingdom of God. So I want to encourage you to be in prayer about that. To choose to partner with us. And then... Be back here next week at the same time because we're going to have another great message for you. And I know that God is going to bring you into a radical encounter. God bless. Well, I hope you enjoyed today's program. If you did, visit our uh, website, faithharvestfellowship.org. And stay tuned next week for another radical encounter with Pastor Forlu at New Hope Ministries. I know he's going to bless you. Thank you. Thank you.